everyone. Welcome to the Small Ball Podcast. Um, this is BCSN, and I'm your host, Bill Littler. So this is going to be the last episode of this season. Um, you know, we'll be busy doing games and such on the field. So um, this episode, the reason why it's it's this late uh, in the game is because it's the weekend before our youth league starts. So our youth games are going to start on the tw- April 24th. I'm going to focus on varsity right now, and I may fill in some of the youth games until we get through the varsity season and then I'll start ramping up and doing more of the the youth games uh, on the network. What I want to talk about is um, a little bit about the rules. Okay, so there were some rule changes this year. So j- just to give everyone an understanding on our, you know, we had a, a, a county league, a fast pitch league, and then we merged into the Western PA League, which was also the Lawrence County League. And we did that for a couple of seasons, then we decided to get out of that for um, there were some financial questions on how things were being run. So we, we got out, and what we ended up doing was creating this league, the Beaver County Fast Pitch League, uh, and it was in 2018 when we did this. And what we did was we we had we named a commissioner, and then we brought in one representative from each of the school districts in Beaver County. That group of people would be the ones who would vote and decide on what we're going to do and everything. And it, um, and what we do every year is we re-review the rules to make sure there's any you know, changes or adjustments or whatever. So let's get into the rules. Um, now, anything that's highlighted like this uh, are things that were changed in the rule books for this season. So, of course, the first thing is you know, it's, it's approved for league play. So we did approve that. Um, now, scrolling through this, and th- this is available on our website, so you'll be able to... Um, you know, to, to, to look at it and, and get an eye of what's going on um, when you review it. Uh, but if you scroll through here, I'm just looking for the yellow highlights. Um, those are the changes that we made. So here's one here. So we never really had anything in about sportsmanship or ejections. Uh, so with the um, couple incidents that we had last year, I mean, there, I, there was nothing too significant. Uh, but we felt that we probably should put something in. So, you know, of course, there's the expectations of the conduct of everybody um, being, a, you know, sportsmanlike and all this. Um, any any conduct unbecoming or abusive uh, shall at a minimum be reprimanded with a warning. Um, and that's up to the umpire's discretion. If the umpire feels the need to eject somebody, then, you know, they, they need to immediately remove that player from from whatever situation they're in. Um, and then any player or coach or spectator that's been ejected needs to remove themselves from the vicinity of the field. Um, and then, of course, there is additional penalties um, that may be assessed at the discretion of the league commissioner and its board members. So um, if it's just something like someone's arguing strikes and balls, you know, it, it's really not a, a, a big thing out of the game. But if there's something that maybe get escalates, and there's a you know, there's a fight or something like that, you know, then we need to, to get the league involved. Okay, scrolling through, looking for the next thing. Um, so this is in the 8U rules here. Um, umpires are recommended for 8U games. Now, what we're going to do this year with 8U, we're going to start seeing if we can make it a little bit more competitive. Um, 6U is being introduced now, and 6U division and the 8U division are very similar with each other. We pretty much just duplicated it and and let the 6U play very similar to how the 8U plays. Uh, what we wanted to do is to increase the competitiveness at the 8U level um, just a little bit. We don't want to change it too much, but just a little bit to help make the girls a little bit more aware of how to play the game. And a lot of this was driven by the recreational tournaments. So when we would have 8U um, teams that represented Beaver County or their their school districts, um, we would uh, the girls would kind of be lost because we would just do the one base at a time, you know, uh, these types of rules for eight U that are similar to six U, and uh, you know our girls were kind of uh, in a learning curve a little bit in these tournaments, and we we want to try to get them a little bit more prepared for those. So. Um, the, the highlighted yellows are the changes that we're doing. So, um, and I'll read through these. So, the only acting umpire may may call a play dead. So, the acting umpire can be someone who both coaches agree with, whether it's another coach, whether it's a parent, whether it's a, a teenager. You know, 
different things like that. Now we have talked to the head of umpire in our area about potentially looking to see if we can get uh, teenagers certified to umpire. So that's still kind of new on how we're doing that. Um, it's still kind of things are working out uh, as a group to figure to, to figure out the best approach to it. So, but that's just something new that we're kind of tinkering with. Um, a play will be stopped if any of the following occurs. Um, and I'm just going to read through these. So on an overthrow at first base or, or third base. So once the ball crosses into foul territory, uh, the play will be ended and the runners may not advance any further. Um, so if, if someone uh, hits the ball, for example, the ball's hit to shortstop, they throw it to first, first baseman misses it, the play's dead. No one can advance. Um, now the next thing is the ball breaks the plane of the circle surrounding the pitcher's mound. Uh, so if, if there is an attempt to throw the ball back to the pitcher who's in the circle um, and the, the pitcher drops it, that ball is still dead. So if it breaks the cylinder of the, of the uh, pitching circle, um, now you cannot just throw the ball through the circle to stop play. There has to be some intent to throw to the pitcher. Uh, but the pitcher doesn't have to secure it. So if the ball is thrown and the pitcher just happens to drop it, um, that that is a dead is that that's a dead ball. Now the next step, next point. The ball is in control of the pitcher, and any part of her body is within a circle. So if the pitcher, if a ball comes from the outfield and she runs out of the circle, grabs it, and runs back into the circle, and then plays dead. Uh, and then the ball is in the control of the infielder, and the lead runner has stopped forward progress. Uh, so if the ball is thrown in from the outfield, and an infielder catches it. And the base runner stops, then that's where the, the play is dead. And on, on C, a ball thrown to second base from any position on the field results in an overthrow. Bases, base runners can advance one base. However, this is not a free base and play is still live. So those are the, those are the changes for the stoppage of play in, in AU. Um, there's additional changes, not many. If a hit ball strikes the coach batter, the ball is called dead. Base runners return to the previous base and the batter returns to bat. The pitch will be a no pitch. So if a ball is hit and the, the uh, coach who is pitching gets hit with it, the ball's dead and they just redo it. So the, those are the rules. Those are the changes to our rules this year. Um, just those few changes. Uh, you know, it's mostly 8U, and like I said, we just want to try to make it a, a little bit more competitive at the 8U level, um, just kind of a step up from 6U to 8U, and then, of course, there'll be more with 10U, um, but we just kind of wanted to, to make sure that the girls are progressing um, as, as we get older. Now, of course, the 6U division is, is newer, so I think we've only been doing that for uh, maybe this will be the third year, I think. Um, so we just want to make sure that we're still advancing and, and making things a little bit more competitive for the girls. The, the next thing that we that I want to talk a little bit about is the uh, championship series. With with twelve U, there's enough teams. There's smaller a smaller amount of teams where everyone's going to play each other once in the regular season. Then we'll do standings and we'll seed everyone into a bracket, uh, and then we'll have the championship games like we have in the past, just like a single elimination bracket. With ten U, um, it seems like every couple of years we go through. A, you know, new people coming in with different ideas. Um, and, and it's always asked about having a competitive teams and, and non-competitive teams. And, and uh, it, it's a fine line because um, we understand that there are some teams, some teams that are really good and there's some teams that are, that are not so good, especially in the smaller districts. Uh, maybe their pitching isn't as good or developed. Um, and you know, sometimes those two teams can be, it, it can be a really uneven team. I think that that's not good for the, the either team, whether it's the really, really good team or the team that isn't so good. And, and it's it can be, uh, you know, can have some negative side effects to it. So what we want to do is try to keep the teams as fair as possible. So if you have three or four teams, we ask the commissioners to make sure that the, the teams are drafted properly and we're not stacking one team over another. Uh, and, and then what happens with the smaller districts is, you know, sometimes they're lucky to get, you know, nine or ten girls to have a team. And, you know, so, of course, when you only have nine or ten girls playing, you don't have as many pitchers to pick from. So if you have, you know, a district that has 30 or 40 girls, then obviously you're going to have more girls interested in pitching when, you know, when you, when you only have nine or ten girls, you might only have one 
that's interested in pitching, you know, maybe two, you know, sometimes none. So you got to develop these girls from scratch. So that's that's where a lot of the differences are with these different uh, districts. You know, what we thought of at Tenu was that we're not going to have a regular season. Okay, the regular season is going to be kind of a free for all for all the coaches to kind of just schedule what they want. So you have some coaches maybe schedule 10 games, 12 games, 16 games. It all depends on what the coaches want. Then they also have the freedom to pick who they play against. So you might have a coach who wants to play against these certain teams, and then you have another coach whose team isn't as competitive that's going to stay with the smaller districts, you know, like the, you know, like the Freedoms and the South Sides and the, and the uh, you know, Beaver Falls. So the smaller, the smaller districts are going to, have the opportunity to play each other now they could go and play the bigger school districts if they'd like to it's an option they have and that's just kind of like how we're doing it we're not tracking standings we're not tracking records or anything like that um, and what we what we're encouraging the coaches to do or we should be encouraging them to do is to use these games as development and get your kids ready for the championship series okay so now, what the championship series is, is what we're going to do is, is we have a total of 20 teams at 10U. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a double elimination tournament for the first couple rounds and then slide those girls into a uh, single elimination bracket. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. Is this one? Yes. So this is, this is, the, uh, this is the elimination bracket. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put all the girls or all the teams in this in this column here and then in this column here. And then they're going to play each other. The winning team is going to move on here. The losing team is going to go to the opposite side. And we're going to fill them in here, the losing teams. And then the same thing over here. The winning team advances. The losing team switches brackets. The, well, the reason why we're doing this is, is one of the concerns was that if we did a blind draw um, and, uh, you know, uh, just pick a bracket and do a double elimination tournament, some of the better teams might get stuck playing each other earlier in the, in the tournament. There still is a rare possibility that you do, but um, having that double elimination will give you the opportunity to, you know, take that next step advance and it, it, it may separate the teams that deserve to be in the championship series and the ones who aren't as good and, and uh, you know you, you don't want them to get a, a, a free ticket into the big band so to the bracket now once these these games are played then we're going to come up with 10 teams here in the middle these 10 teams are going to advance into the championship series and the championship bracket let's click on this tab here and then this is going to be the champion of course the 6u and 8u divisions do not have a championship um, series um, now um, it was an idea to potentially look at 8u having a championship series so right now we have 10u and 12u um, playing for a championship we may introduce 8u to do that next year uh, but it's something that we're going to kind of talk through over the winter and see if, if it's something that we want to do uh, and want to introduce to the girls. Of course, the next thing is everyone, we want to see what the awards are, right? So um, what we can do is I can show you this picture. Um, this is of the awards that we had last year, and we're going to try to do something very similar. Um, these silver medals will be for the second place girls, um, you know, whatever teams win second place. Um, I typically don't have a problem finding these. Uh, last year was the first year we did the, these championship rings, and we're going to try to do the same rings because we have extras from last year. It's th the new thing nowadays. You know, the trophies are kind of old school, uh, so these these rings are kind of the new thing. So uh, it's something cool uh, for the girls, something different, and uh, it's definitely something that uh, is a nice reward for all the hard work and dedication to to get to the championship games and and uh, you know uh, win it. You know it's it's not easy to do. Uh, so it's it's very uh, uh, it's re very rewarding when a team can can actually get to get together and, and go through the the Beaver County uh, League and, and win a championship. So it's pretty cool. I actually did it once with uh, a 14U team 
that we had. It was the first year. It was in 2018. Uh, of course, my daughter was on it, and uh, it, it was a it was a pretty cool experience. So the the, the only other thing that I, I want to uh, talk about is signing up for the uh, to to live stream your youth games. I want to come up with something where uh, everyone can just kind of add their names to to a list and maybe give me an idea of what games you want to stream and then I'll see what fits my schedule. I just need to come up with a, an easy way for everyone to kind of submit their request on what games they would like to, to stream and then I'll have to put a schedule together and let everyone know uh, what games will be going on and I'll kind of do that for a week-to-week -week basis kind of like what I do with varsity. Um, I'll, um, I, I, I typically don't tell the varsity coaches where I'm going until a week before and I do that a lot of reason because of the weather of course. Uh, having said that, that's, that comes to the end of the show. I felt that this was something that could be very uh, useful for, for parents and for coaches to understand who we are, what, what changes we're making, what, what are we doing behind the scenes that maybe uh, the parents and coaches don't really get to see or understand um, you know, uh, the work that, that everyone puts into this league. Um, you know, this league is, is definitely something that I feel is very successful. Um, you know, we. Uh, you know, we have very little issues. You know, there there are some things that, that pop up every once in a while, but it's really not that bad. And uh, you know, a lot of that is is the hard work and dedication from all the commission or the uh, the board members who are our your district representatives. Um, and uh, you know, I can't thank them enough because without them, it would be really challenging to to put together a league like this and to have it run as smoothly as it's been running over the years. So, um, you know, if you could thank your president or, or your uh, district uh, commissioner or whatever you call them, um, you know, because they're, like I said, they're, they're heavily involved in this and trying to figure it all out. So, um, all right. So uh, that's all I got for, for uh, this episode. And uh, thanks for joining. And I will see you on the field. Till I get what I want I turn a business out of nothing Into something I love I got a poker face But honestly I'm not one to bluff I flip a switch Never miss Man I always stay up Don't let them see you Always have a plan to stay tough This life ahead of you Ain't easy It was built to be rough But that's what makes a personality Is tragedy bro uh, so keep your head on your shoulders Now we ain't out here moving rocks We out here moving boulders Now we ain't getting postal rides We out here making posters And we ain't got nothing to hide We move forward like soldiers You better wake up for the pay stop Or your pay up don't make